If you're just starting with DocuSign in 2022 and you want to get up to speed quickly, then this video is for you. So in this video, I'm going to show you how DocuSign works, how to send documents for signature and how your signers can sign them. We'll also cover what features you need to learn if you want to save even more time and create the best signing experience for your customers and colleagues. And if you're new to the channel, my name is Sofian Saudi. I'm an ex-DocuSign trainer and I'm also the founder of SolarSign Consulting, where we help investment and lending firms automate paperwork with DocuSign templates and integrations. So if you need help implementing DocuSign within your organization, you can book a strategy call with me and you can also download your free copy of my DocuSign Mastery Cheat Sheet, which will walk you through um, the steps I'm about to show you just now in this video. All the things that I mentioned in today's video, you can find their links in the description down below. So let's get into it. So let's pretend for a second that I'm a sales rep and I want my client Bob to uh, sign his document. So I want to collect Bob's company um, details on the first page. And then I also want Bob to provide me with his signature on the last page of the document. I, as a sales representative, also want to countersign this document once Bob has completed the document. So now let's log into DocuSign and see how that works. Based on the assumption that you've already got a DocuSign account, the way you would send a document for signature is by clicking on Start Now. When you click on Start Now, what happens is that DocuSign creates a new envelope. Now, what's an envelope? An envelope is simply what DocuSign is calling the email. When you send an email to someone, you first need to create an email and then you upload the documents. It's exactly the same thing in DocuSign. So very first step, we need to upload all our documents. So I'm gonna upload the document that I just showed you right now, which is a document called NDA template. I can add Word documents, I can add PDF documents, I can add a lot of different uh, types of documents and I can place as many as I want inside my envelope. Now I'll click on next because I don't want to add another document for signature in this specific envelope. The second step is to add our recipients. The recipients are the people who are going to receive the document and either sign or just receive a copy of the document. So I want Bob Smith to sign my document. I'm going to add Bob Smith's name and his email as well. Next to his email and name, I can choose the action for Bob. I, I can either select needs to sign, receive the copy or in-person signer. This would be if Bob was signing it in my physical presence. So he would be using my computer. I can also specify recipients and allow to edit. I'm not going to go through those two because they're pretty advanced. I can also add an access code for Bob to make sure that when he actually accesses the envelope, he is who he say he is. So if I enter one, two, three, four here, Bob will need to enter one, two, three, four before he can access the envelope. Not gonna worry about it for the purpose of this video, but basically in this step, you can add as many recipients as you want. And DocuSign will take care of routing the envelope one from one recipient to the next if you specify a signing order. And that's the case in this example. I want Bob to first sign a document and then I, as a sales representative, want to countersign the document only when Bob has completed his signature process. So I'm gonna click on add recipient and then add my name here. The needs to sign action is correct as well. I need to sign a document and I don't need to add myself as a receives a copy recipient because all signers and senders will always receive a copy of the final document as a PDF attachment. When I'm done with adding the recipients, I also need to add a signing order. If I don't set a signing order, all the recipients in the list of recipients will receive the document at the same time, which is not what I want in this particular example. So if I click on set signing order, then Bob has a number one, meaning he signs first, and I have a number two because I sign after Bob has signed. The envelope will not route to me until, unless Bob has signed the document himself. Now I'll click on next and that next step will take me to the field step. So the third step is for you to add fields on the document. Why would you want to add fields? Well, think of when you send a document for signature to someone as an email attachment. They might forget signature, they might forget to provide you with some information in a field like a phone number or an address. With DocuSign, this problem doesn't exist because you as the sender have the option to tell DocuSign 
where your recipients need to take a specific action on the document, meaning that your documents are much less likely to miss information when they come back. The only reason your signatures will be missing is if you forget to add the field. So to the top left here, you can see that I've got Bob Smith selected and he's got a yellow button next to him and then my name is in blue. If I toggle and choose my name, then all the fields that are here to the left become blue. And so when you add a field on the document by simply dragging and dropping a field, you can see that the color helps you to know who the field is assigned to. So what I want to do here is navigate through all the pages of the document and look where I want to my recipients to take an action on the document. So on this part of the document, I want to collect the company's address and company name. I'll get back to this just after I actually show you how to build the signature field. Normally you would start from start to finish, but just for this demo, it makes more sense for me to start this way. So um, here I can see that this is where Bob needs to sign. I also want to sign. So I'm going to drag a signature field for Bob. I just drag from the left and then place it on the document. I also want Bob's name to appear here. So I'll drag a name field. I want Bob's title, so I drag this here, and then I also want Bob's signature date, so I'll drag that one. If I select my field, because I'm a bit an OCD freak, I'll select all my fields and I'll use the left aligning tools, meaning that DocuSign will align all the fields to the left. Now that's done, I can do the same thing for my field. So remember, I need to first change the uh, color to myself, and then I can drag and drop all my fields. I could do the same thing, so, you know, signature, name, date, and title, but I'm a bit lazy, I don't wanna do that. So I'm gonna select all those fields and then do a Command D or Control D, depending if, whether you're using Mac or PC, that copies all the fields that I have highlighted, and then I'll drop those here. Now you're saying, yeah, but Sofian, you just said that you need to change the signature, the field's color to blue, because otherwise Bob will need to sign twice, and that would be true. So what I need to do is, before I move on to the next task, is to change the recipient whose those fields belong and select myself. Now the fields are blue, meaning that I will be signing here and then Bob will be signing here. No worries. Now, when it comes to those three fields here, they happen automatically, meaning that they will actually print whatever name, title or date sign apply to the envelope. DocuSign will pull the full name of the person whose the field is assigned to, depending on what you've entered in the list of recipients. You know in my screen just before, I've entered Bob Smith, so DocuSign will not ask Bob to provide his name because we've already got his name. In terms of the date sign, DocuSign will just use the timestamp by which that applies when Bob actually clicks on the signature field. And for the title, if Bob has a DocuSign account, the title will print automatically based on what's in Bob's profile of the DocuSign account. If Bob doesn't have one, this will become a free text field for Bob to enter his title. And so you can collect more than just signatures with DocuSign. You can collect signatures, information, and also payment. We won't get into payment, but let's see how to collect information. So if I go back to my very first page, I also want to collect Bob's company name and the company address. So I'm going to use a text field. Text field allows you to collect whatever information you want and that's pretty awesome. So I can expand the width of my field so that it matches the width of the underlying line. And then I can also change the label. So it's current, each field that you add to the document have a label. I'm going to call this one company name. Now, why would I want to change the label? The reason you want to change the label and give a meaningful name to all the fields is because once the document is completed, DocuSign will allow you to extract all the information as a separate data point. Meaning that if you want to export the information from your envelopes to create Bob's client file in your CRM, you can do that. And so you can either do this via CSV export and import in your CRM, or you can also do this automatically with API if you integrate DocuSign with any other app that you already have. For example, you could do this with Zapier, Integromat, Microsoft Power Automate, and that is how you save a ton of time. Now, I can do the same thing for my second field here, and I can call this one address line one. 
The fields that you add to the envelope can also be customized with rules and each rule will have a different action and document. Rules help your signers and yourself save even more time. So let's just use an example. If I want Bob's company name to be here on this line and I also know that I want Bob's company name to be here on this line, then I can add another field just right here and then I can call this field company name. And when you do label two fields with the same label, what happens, there's a uh, replication rule that happens automatically. And then um, the uh, fields that have the same label will replicate the data they contain. So when Bob will enter company XYZ at the top of the document, company XYZ will print here. You can also have conditional rules. So for example, if the document was asking Bob if he had a spouse, if he answers yes, then Bob will be prompted to, will actually show a field for him to enter the spouse name. But if he selects no, then the spouse name field will disappear. And you can also add validation rule. So let's just say you were asking Bob to provide his date of birth. You could add a validation rule to a specific field to make sure that Bob enters the data, so the date of birth in the format that you want. Europeans, we provide the date with the day of the month first, followed by the month. And in the US, it's, vibr it's, it's the opposite. So you wanna make sure that you have the data not only not missing, but also that you get the data how you want it. And DocuSign is great for that. So as a recap, you need to first create your envelope and add your document, then you add your recipients, then you add your fields. And once you've done that, you can also add rules, but that's totally optional. It's just a plus, I, I highly recommend them though. Once you've added all of this, you click on next, and then you can customize the email message and the email subject for Bob. When you're done, you click on send, and instantly the first recipient in your list is going to receive the document that you just sent. So let's just go to Bob's inbox now and see what email looks like. So viewing the envelopes of Bob in his inbox, we can see that we've got a notification inviting Bob to sign. So we'll click on review document and DocuSign will then show us the document Bob needs to sign. If Bob wants to reassign the signing responsibility because, hey, no, it wasn't for Bob to sign this document, it's for Betty, he can go to more options and then assign the document for to someone else. And this, by the way, this option is controlled by the sender, so you don't have to allow this. And then we'll click on continue, and then DocuSign, if we click on start, will take the signer to the first field that's required. So if we go company ABC, then we can see that this field is required, so we have to do it because it's in red. If we click on fill in again, then we navigate to the second field. Let's just go with one, two, three main street. And if we click on fill in again, it takes us straight to where Bob is to sign the document. And you can see here that the company name has already been populated from whatever Bob entered in the first field of the document. Now Bob just needs to click on sign and adopt and sign. He can also draw the signature or upload if he can be bothered, don't know why you wanna do that. But then you click on adopt and sign and then that's it. You've got Bob's signature on the document. That's how easy it is. And Bob could have done this on mobile device as well. It just works exactly the same. When Bob clicks on finish, and actually I'm gonna remove title just for a second and show you that if Bob tries to click on finish before all the fields are completed, he can't. He has to validate this field by acting on it. Then when he clicks on finish, the envelope will route from the first recipient to the next in the signing order, meaning that I will need to sign the envelope because I'm the second signer. So viewing the inbox as myself, I'll click on review the document and same thing, I'll be taken to the document. I'll click on continue and start and then all the fields have been filled out. I just need to click on sign and that's it. The document is now completed. All senders and signers will receive a PDF version of the document signed in their inbox. And that's the email notification that signers will receive. All documents are completed. We can either click on view completed documents or if you want PDF copies of the documents to be attached to that email notification, you can also set that up in your DocuSign account and we can see the document has been signed and we can also download a copy from here. Now, this is how easy it is to send and sign documents for signature with DocuSign, but it's time consuming to add all the fields, add the signature um, workflow and all the different bits that you want to add to your envelopes to make sure they work the way you want. So instead of sending normal envelopes from scratch, what you can do is use templates. Templates really allow you to speed up the process. Let me show you. 
So um, I'm gonna click on use here after I select my template and then I enter the name of the variable recipient, so Bob for example, and then when I'm done, I click on send. And that's it. It took me like literally less than 10 seconds. So in the next video, I really wanna show you how you can create your template and use them so that you can make the most of DocuSign and save even more time. I will see you then. Ciao.